Release the ninja chinchillas. Wait, what did he say? Fatality. So, starting off, we have the Apply titled Vanilla Expanded Animals. That is, if you were playing the modern version, but there was a time when the base animal versions of Expanded Animals came in module chunks before being put together into one super mod. We will be talking about each animal set based on biome and where they came from in each individual module. Starting off, everyone's favorite non-chinchilla pet animals, cats and dogs, found not within biomes they are found in a trader's inventory. So what do you get? Well, 21 different animals, a whole pet store of different breeds of cats and dogs. For dogs we have the Beagle, Chihuahua, Corgi, French Bulldog, and the German Shepherd. Then there is the Great Dane, the Poodle, not the toy variant, the Light Pug, and hard-working Rottweiler. Then the Shih Tzu and Welsh Terrier. Round out the list of dogs, plenty to choose from when it comes to what to play around with. As for training them, all of them can be trained for release so you can, as Mr. Burns puts it, release the hounds. But for hauling, that's different. Only the German Shepherd, Great Dane, Poodle, Rottweiler, and Welsh Terrier can haul and rest so do keep that in mind when picking out your new pet for your colonist kids. Then there is the cat. With the exception of one on the list, the only thing they can do is just walk around and look cute. There is the Abyssian cat, the Bengal, and British Shorthair cats, the Munchkin, Norwegian Forest Persian, and Siamese cats. The Somali Sphinx rounds out a bit, but gonna say now that I know we got the hairless Sphinx, might be good for an Egyptian ideology for revered animals. So what about the cat that can do more than laze around like an annoyed orange cat? Well, that's where the main Coon, one of the largest domesticated breeds of cats, so it can not only haul, but rescue and even be a cute gentle giant for the kids. Honestly, while the cats for the most part don't do much aside from being cute, maybe you want to roleplay having pets for kids in your colony, and to be honest, they are pretty cute even if they don't pay the rent staying in the base. Moving on to Shrublands, a terrain that's hot and has less trees, it's not the hardest place to live in, but one should be careful of the animals that roam. The coyote and cheetah make their home here and also act as hauling animals, though do be careful, they bite. Wild beasts are also a decent source of meat, though pretty tanky like their real-life counterparts. They also provide a small source of milk, though there are far better animals if you are looking for milk bringers. Zebras are also on the plains, and both them and the wild beasts are pack animals if you wish to find your new caravan animals. Now, the last two animals are unique in that they only spawn in river tile shrubland areas. Those are being the crocodiles and hippos. Hippos are mighty tanks that can be trained to haul and also kill. Very aggressive and hard to tame, but if you can, you got a great defense animal. Crocodiles are your standard big lizards. They bite hard and they could even take down larger prey, like stupid pawns who try to tame them. Going further into the hotter regions, we have the desert animals. Not a lot, but still good to add to the sandy regions. Stuff like the great desert tortoise, big armored slow reptiles like can tank a few shots. The Gila Monster, who has a nasty venomous bite that can trigger a toxic buildup. Not a good pet for the kids, I must say. The Lion, which is one of the biggest species of felines in the world that also acts as pack hunters, making them perfect for being hauler and rescuers. Hyenas also fit this role, smart and big enough to be a proper hauler, but I feel a pack of them sent against tribals is a good way to make Rimworld nightmare fuel. Do not Google what they do prey animals gave my writer nightmares. Nightmare. Then of course there is the extreme desert. It's hot, it's sandy, and we got three more animals. The camel, which provides a source of milk and wool, great for any colony. The rattlesnake, which has a nasty bite that can and will cause a painful death, especially if you tame a bunch of them and train them for release on some poor hobos who want your corn. And finally, mega scorpions, who deliver a deadly sting from their tail. It's the extreme desert. What did you expect? Friendly animals? Yeah, still not making me want to live out here, even if they are thematically correct. <laughs> <laughs>
let's go somewhere a bit cooler. Like the Boreal Forest, a nicer, cooler place to call home. Nothing to worry about. Well, nothing except the Arctic Coyote and big old black bears. Great animals for hauling and release, of course. But the last animal in this small pack is the river otter, which is a muscle baby. Oh my gosh, I can't say this word. Thinking of them as big weasels is probably the best way. Sadly, you can't train them to haul, but hey, they are vicious enough to join in the big old boreal animal army. Going further north to the tundra, we are provided with appropriate animals stuffed like the porcupine, an adorable little rodent with enough needles to sew up a thousand sweaters, the mighty moose, which my writer tells me is scarier than a bear given his time when he lived in Alaska. Makes sense, predators can live to fight another day. Prey if they see you as a threat and want to fight will give it their all. Though, with the mega wolverine walking around the tundra, I kinda get where it's coming from with the moose. That's a big animal. I think even Magneto might have problems with. Finally, the muskox, which is a big woolly pack animal and I just wanna hug it. Even further up north is the ice sheet with three more cold inclined animals. Oh, we're gonna sneeze because it's cold on the ice sheet. <laughs> Are we done? Okay. The penguin which is a proper aquatic burp who we all know and love, especially when they tap dance or fight capped crusaders of the night. The seal, which is a medium-sized source of food, but do be careful, they are predators, but hey, nothing a few clubs can't fix. Wow, I feel kind of dirty saying that. <sighs> The walrus is a big blueberry pile of flesh. They also provide tusk when butchered, which can be sold off, not only keeping your bellies fed, but same with your coffers. Back into warm, a climate, let's talk about the rainforest. A wondrous, lush place with exotic animals, also bugs. Lots of bugs, but let's not think about that. Look at the lemurs, so cute, and they like to move it, move it. They also are the only animals in this part of the rainforest to not be haulers. Yeah, every other other animal here can haul, rescue, and of course, rip and tear. There is the tapir, probably said that wrong, a relative to the pig, and just like boars and pigs, worth a decent amount of meat. Mandrill, which are angry looking monkeys, but despite their look, are pretty shy. And reclusive primates. They also have big blue behinds, which never fails to make my inner child laugh. Gorillas also make their appearance here. Now they are the real deal, smart, and with muscle to back it up. You don't want to make him angry. Same with tigers, one of the biggest felines on the planet. These solitary hunters can and will shred an unprepared pawn like it's nothing. Fun fact about tigers, you might wonder how they are good hunters if they are orange and black. Well, they are orange to us, but most animals actually can't see the color orange. It shows up as green. So from their perspective, it's green and black, like foliage. Isn't that neat? Almost as neat as jaguars, which like tigers are top tier hunters. Care Careful around them, they can also tear into you. Then again, if you plan to live in the tropical rainforest, you're probably already prepared for the pain. Near the rainforest is the tropical swamps. Nasty, murky places, but they do have a few new animals to find. Though I doubt you'd want to mess with the alligator and anaconda. Both very tough reptiles who would love to try some pawn flesh, I do say so myself. Hmm, wait. Pawn flesh, hmm. Let's try it, hmm. However, you can also hunt or perhaps tame the Indian elephant, or a great source of meat, or perhaps a good hauler or caravan animal. Personally, I'd rather make friends with elephants, after all, they tend to remember who wronged them. The Australian Animals was a module made in support of the Australian wildfires, providing us four more animals based on the outback and can be found in a multitude of biomes. The small koala, which shouldn't be a problem to hunt down, just don't let them drop on you, these little drop bears. <laughs> the platypus, which can be taught to release, unless he is wearing a hat and fighting a mad scientist who wants to take over the tri-state area, I doubt they are going to be useful. Now the kangaroos make for better attack animals and real talk kangaroos are vicious in real life. Do not go into a lake with one. You can and will drown you. Finally, the boom bat, a cross between a wombat and boomalope. Cute and dangerous. The kids love them. 
Finally, we go into the temperate forest, the calmest of the regions. Well, for the most part, you've got little hedgehogs being little simple balls of meat, geese, which despite their look can be rather aggressive, beavers, which have the unique ability to make little dam structures in bodies of water. You can even deconstruct them for wood if you want. Badgers are an upper small sized omnivore, more than likely gonna hunt down the smaller animals. Finally, the red panda, cause they look at it. I want one. They are so adorable and I will slaughter many factions who hates them. Yep, that, that sounds about fair. So yeah, vanilla expanded animals, a huge set of modules rolled out into one convenient package. You can even disable individual animals in the mod option. A great feature if you ask me. But don't fret if you want more exotic animals, because don't you worry, we have plenty more to talk about. Oh my gosh, we're not even halfway done. So what could be more exotic than endangered animals? Well, now your colonists can have access to these rare and in some cases extinct in our world animals. But how do you get them? Well, after installing the mod, you can get an event where endangered animals will arrive, hopefully in a breeding pair. Now you could just hunt them down like the monster you are, but you could instead do something else. Tame them and breed them, and then release them back into the wild. Why do this when that's a lot of good exotic meat on their bones? Releasing endangered animals actually provides relation to other factions. After all, being known as the guy who breeds and releases pandas back into the wild is gonna help your reputation. Real talk, I am an animal lover, and the fact there is a mod pack that lets me take care of endangered animals out on the rim and be rewarded for doing so just warms my heart. More so with the 11 different animals being some of the cooler of the exotics. There is naturally pandas, bit old bamboo boys hailing from China, the African black rhino who deserves just as much love as any other rhino, those big armored doggos, the black footed ferrets which are cute little furry sausages and I want one now, bonobos which are like chimpanzees as a very close relative to us humans, the giant pangolin are leg armored crosses between an armadillo and anteater, and I absolutely love pangolians, but for it, a cool animal who rolls up into an awesome hard ball. The moa, which is an extinct flightless bird of New Zealand, now you can rebuild their population out on the rim. Quaggas, I hope that was right, are a subspecies of zebra in South Africa that sadly got hunted to extinction like the moa. Rectify that and breed them and return them to the wild. Rockhopper penguins are a cool looking species of penguin who get their name from their habit which tends to be rocky shorelines. Thylacines, or or their common name, the Tasmanian wolves or tigers, are a sadly extinct species formerly native to the shores of Australia and, of course, the Tasmania Islands. You could breed them for release, but given their disposition could use them for attack animals. Same with African wild dogs. While considered endangered, it isn't by our hands. It's because they live out in fragmented packs and will also work to avoid inbreeding, which I gotta say is an interesting reason for animals to become endangered. They are also ferocious hunters competing with lions and hyenas, which I gotta respect. Finally, one of the most famous on the list, the Tasmanian Devil, made popular by with the Looney Tune character of the same name, they are wild, ferocious, loud marsupials that can give honey badgers a run for their money with how vicious they can be. And that's all 11 endangered animals and a new way to roleplay out on the rim or maybe get some respect from other factions, not to mention bring attention to some of the endangered animals out on this list. It's gonna be sad day when they sometimes disappear. Now, what I kinda wish would disappear is some of the cave animals. Animals. First off, this mod adds a variety of animals to any biome with the subtype. Animals like giant spiders that will hunt your colonists like hobbits. You get them in hatchling size, giant size, and ancient oh guy god why size. Needless to say, extremely dangerous and hard to bring down. Heck, this mod even includes a quest type to hunt down the ancient spiders. Not worth it if you ask me to go in directly, use nukes. So what else can you interact with in the caves that aren't as dangerous? Cave crawlers based on the classic D&D carrion crawler. Yeah, the cave kind of suck if we have insects of huge size, more so ones that can spread the bubonic plague. Needless to say, kill with fire or plasma weapons from VE insectoids. Then there is the insectoid Hulk, an untamable fusion of man and insect who can rip arms off like a Wookiee and even tear down walls when in eager. Angered. Yes. If you have to fight one, bring in the big guns cause it won't go down without a fight. But good news, there are less dangerous animals in this pack. The cave bear, while it can be a bit dangerous when tamed, is a strong bear that can forage for berries and let's be honest, bears can be pretty cute when they aren't attacking you. Same with the blind salamanders, a multicolored set of amphibians who, when collected, actually give a mood buff to all pawns. A pretty good thing to try and attempt. Also, trying to attempt to tame and train the worm, already a pretty strong 
strong animal, great for hauling and fighting, but if it's bonded to a pawn and is following said pawn into battle, it will gain a boost to power. Weaponizing friendship and adding to your survivability, I like it at a, in an animal. All in all, this mod, while not for everyone, I think it does add a bit more variety to another biome. Oh, and for the spiders, you can turn off their legs if you want in the options. They are still dangerous, but hey, a little more friendly. Now for royal animals, where every animal has a proper use that isn't just to be hunted or to hunt your pawns, naturally you need the royalty DLC for this one, but it adds a lot more to it. In order to obtain these animals, you have to purchase them from the Empire. They are special. Royal animals can't just let any old weirdo out on the rim have them. So what can you get? First, the cranes, awesome birds that nobility loves. So much so, if you have at least five in the colony, any pawns with a royal title will gain a mood buff. Obviously, helpful in keeping royal guests happy too. Orangutans are intelligent simians you can have in your colony. Good for hauling and resources, but their unique skill in communicating with pawns, yeah. They can actually have conversation with pawns, even build up social relationships and teach random skills. Have a couple of these guys in and they won't make a monkey out of you. Peacocks and hens are special nuzzlier animals that have the nuzzle. A pawn boosts their psychic sensitivity by 25% for 12 hours and it stacks up to eight times. Great for the casters in the colony for obvious reasons. Pheasants are small birds that when scared and start fleeing trigger a psychic pulse to turn all nearby pawns invisible temporarily of course. Somehow yeah I don't know how it works but hey it's a neat gimmick. Quail are very special their royal poultry is so fine it turns any meal it's a part of into a lavish meal. My recommendation is breed and butcher them then make a special simple meal order that only uses their meat. Now you get an easy source of lavish meals that all pawns will enjoy and thank you for. Plus quails are pretty cute birds. Royal tigers are huge similodons that despite their ferocious look actually nuzzle a lot. Great for hauls and resources and maybe a bit of royal releasing. Swans make flowery nests on their own that not only act as a free animal sleeping spot but increase the beauty of any room they are in. Turns your boring bonds into wonderful places for the workers. Angora rabbits are special psychic rabbits that when bonded to a master will increase psychic heat dissipation making them far better casters though with a major catch. If the master dies, so does the rabbit. Finally, the mega chicken and uh, the, the mega cock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a personal favorite of the royals because these chickens grow in age. Every year they grow in size and their stats grow as well and now you can in fact summon Mega Ultra Chicken. I love the royal animals, they fit in the royal setting and they each have a great design. Plus all of them have some use that any royal pawn can find some value in. Especially the Mega Ultra Chicken. Chicken arise, arise chicken. Finally the waste animals. At least as of writing this video, this mod includes a lot of new animals that look like normal vanilla animals if they took a dip in some radioactive waste. Some will help you if you live in the waste is. Others are there to punish you, but all can be surrounded by the waste animal wander, an event that triggers if your population level rises too high. Oh, my bad. Pollution level. Also, keep in mind that not every animal will show up. Some are limited to certain areas, so keep that in mind. First, the waste fellow. An obvious mutated muffalo with two heads. This animal has twice the attack speed, still good for caravanning at least. The tox bear, meanwhile, is an angry man hunting beasts that won't stop until you or it's dead. It will eventually kill itself from the stress of course, but till then you are on their list. Tox lions are dangerous predators with a nasty ability to transmit the tox flu onto pawns. What is tox flu? Well, we will get into that soon enough. Just remember to attack from afar if you want to hunt them. Tox iguanas can spit acid at victims and the worst part about trying to hunt them, they instantly decompose at death, making it not even worth the hassle. Tox scorpions are huge, nasty insectoids that can literally sting and inject carcinomas into your pawns. Let that sink in. Thanks to pollution, there is a huge scorpion who has weaponized cancer. That's straight up nightmare fuel. Tox foxes are cute haulers that do the not so cute thing of digging up waste packs out of polluted areas. Waste boars are large variants of boars that have a habit of smashing trees in a fit of rage. Waste deer don't actually do anything at all. They are their normal deer aside from the second head. Yep, pestigator, an animal that already is pretty strong. But if it's in the winter, it will be faster and stronger and obviously deadlier. The Megatoddy is a huge mutated water bear that makes for a decent pack animal. Yeah, things are getting weird. 
Finally, the Hydra, a three-headed cobra with triple the attack speed, handle with care. So, back to Tox Flu. What was that? Well, it's a unique new illness that can spread between colonists via social interaction. It affects breathing, sight, and consciousness. Oh, and if you recover, you may develop long tox flu. Long tox flu, you really don't want it. It permanently reduces the efficiency of the lungs by 30%. And then there is the meat you get from these animals. It's pretty bad. Toxic meat when eaten will provide a mood debuff and up toxic buildup. Obviously a last resort meat, but hey, if you are living in a polluted hellscape, Perhaps your only choice. I'd like to thank all the Patreons that make content like this possible. We literally couldn't do this without you guys. The math doesn't math with uh, YouTube YouTubing at the moment uh, and costing us like half our money. So yeah, if anybody wants to donate, feel free to go to Patreon and donate a dollar a month. You'll get ad-free videos and early access to future videos. So keep that in mind. We'll see you guys in the next one.